All right, we finally made it to my favorite technique on the claw hammer banjo, and that is the alternate string pull-off. So we're gonna spend a couple weeks on the alternate string pull-off with different patterns. The first one is going to be fairly easy. You're gonna do a downstroke on your open third string, you're gonna pull off your first string, and then you're gonna follow that with a ditty on the first and fifth strings. I will walk you through it slowly. I'm gonna show you what it looks like at different tempos, and then we'll talk about the mechanics of what's going on. Okay, nice and slow. In this instance, I'm using my middle finger on the second fret of the first string to get my pull off. We are pulling off a string that we are not striking with our right hand, and that's why it's called the alternate string pull off. Let me show you this at different tempos, and then we'll talk about some little tricks and hints that I can give you to get this so you guys can get this up to speed. Let's just start right off the bat at 104. That's 104. Let me show you what that looks like at 160. And finally at 208, we'll max it out. Okay, and we can go faster. You can generate tremendous speed with the alternate string pull-off. Let me show you that now. I'm gonna start slow, ramp it up to my max, and then drop off again. Just so you can see what kind of speed you can generate with a little bit of practice. Okay, good. Let's talk about mechanics. Couple of things. First of all, this is an eighth note pattern. So all of your notes need to have the same time. Second, all of your notes need to have the same volume. And that's difficult because we are attacking the strings with three different surfaces in this technique. A downstroke, right, with the back of our nail. We're doing a pull off, so the pad of our finger, and the thumb stroke. All three of those surfaces are involved in making this pattern which makes this pattern really tricky to balance out. So you want to focus on smoothness, of course, and keeping a good groove and a solid tempo. But the second most important thing, I think, for this particular pattern is that you listen for that volume and try to get it nice and even. It will do wonders for your playing as well as for your ears. Now some tricks. One of the biggest tricks is that when I do my downstroke, I'm setting up for the pull off with the left hand. And if you look at the center line in my banjo and use your peripheral vision to watch the movement of my hands, you're going to see that the timing between my right and left hands is critical to making a nice smooth stroke. So here we go. Watch that 12th fret position and just watch my, and see the, my two hands out of your peripheral vision. When I drop down into my first downstroke on the open third string, I'm setting that uh, middle finger up on the first string. I'm fretting it, not too hard, because if you fret it too hard, you'll get a phantom hammer on, which we don't want. So I'm setting up my left finger, my left middle finger, fretting that second fret with on the first string went at simultaneous to my first downstroke on the open third string that's all that those movements are very exaggerated so don't think they're these huge movements you want them small subtle and economical when you do them so if you have trouble with this let me know it is a tricky technique in the beginning but i think you're going to find if you put a little time into it every day just a little bit of time every day 
this technique will be up and rolling and you can use it in every tune you play. It is wonderful. I'm gonna show you a ton of different uses for it in the upcoming lessons. Comments and questions below and I will see you next week. Thank you.